because they, uh, I feel a, a little bit of disadvantage because I haven't heard what the other journeys were. <laughs> so I've got no idea whether I'm going to be repeating things or um, that interest. And I've always believed that everyone can do more maths than they realise and they, they can enjoy it. But they don't always believe me. So why did I want to come to the seminar series? Well, I'd spent, um, I'm, so I'm a mathematician, I'm actually fairly new into formal teaching and my first paid job was in a, as a supply part-timer in an inner city school in Nottingham. And I had one group there where they were bottom set, but that didn't necessarily mean that they were poor mathematicians. It meant that they weren't succeeding in the system. And they had a very narrow window for traditional learning. If they could do it, it was easy, no sense of satisfaction. If it was too hard, there was no point trying because you don't want to be a failure. So they had this very narrow band when they could actually feel the challenge and get success. So I thought, I'll use my wonderful training. Sounds a bit like <laughs> the other Sally. Um, I'd done Vygotsky and I wanted to get this open-ended activity, this open learning, and they hated it. Because one of the functions, which I wouldn't have expressed it quite this way at the beginning, one of the functions maths played in their life, it was, it was one certainty. It was the one thing they could count on. Their lives were otherwise pretty disjointed, unreliable. And so maths was the one place where they knew what, what was black, what was white, what was right, what was wrong. And so to do these open-ended activities, I'd taken that away and they hated it. So I wanted to know what kind of activities could I use with them? Where were their mass identities coming from? Where could I put that in? Um, I didn't actually survive the experience, so I moved on. <laughs> um, I went into, I was in another uh, 11 to 18 school for a year, and I'm, then I moved to where I am now, which is in a, a sixth form college. So it's post 16. And there I'd got the kids I'd had in year nine, these days they all stay in education. They don't get out of school as soon as they can anymore. They all carry on and go to college. So I had these now at 16, still with the same skills that they had at 14, doing the stuff for goodness knows how many times. And I reckon I spent 10% teaching them maths and 90% doing psychology. I mean, I was using my counselling skills, I reckoned, more than I was using my math skills. So I came to this series hoping to understand better how these students saw themselves in relation to maths and to find ways of building positive identities for them, ways in which as a teacher I could better enable them to function mathematically. So it's about my journey. So how has the journey gone? Um, I've enjoyed the three lenses. I haven't, apart from what I did in my PGCE, I've not really done much reading. I don't know all the vocabulary. Um, I think it's, for me, it's been really useful that you've had the three lenses. Um, I might still mix them up, but I think each one of them has been clearer for me because of having the three presentations. Um, some of the key words would not have registered if I'd gone to something that had just had one of the, of the aspects. So quite apart from the different play, roles they play, having the three there has helped me to understand the strengths and the bits I want to take from each one. And I thought I'd pick one from each of the areas from different seminars that are continuing with me on my journey. Um, the first one was on assessment. It was probably the discursive area. Um, the expression of identity as taking, taken to refer to the ways in which individuals account for their practices and their positioning within the discourses available. That resonated with what I was observing and how I was thinking about the, the way in the classroom. And I liked the QCA quote that we had from that seminar, which was that once the teacher has established what the pupil is to achieve and how the pupil can achieve it, the pupil is in a position to guide their own learning. And he went on to say, some pupils will resist this, wanting to blame the teacher rather than themselves for their lack of learning. 
but such methods are surprisingly successful if persisted with. That gave me the encouragement to persist with my level one learners. So the next seminar was the pedagogy, and that seminar was one that gave me a challenge to my ideas, and it's an idea that I'm continuing to, to think about. Um, various other things that I go to, people say things, and I keep thinking, I want to challenge that, but I don't quite know how yet. And it was brought to us, or to me, by the, social pers the sociocultural perspective. And this was the, the, the poo conversation, those of you there might know. And it was the idea that the mathematical and peer identity work can work reciprocally to legitimise each other within the classroom. Um, the, the idea that the acceptance of mathematics into peer discourses and the sociality of the students in the maths classroom may be the first signs in a chain of acceptance of a mathematical identity. So the, the, the discourses that were going on in those classrooms when kids were switching between talking about maths and dissing each other and talking about what they were going to do that night or watch they watch on the, or whatever else it was that they were talking about their ordinary conversations that that discourse was a sign that perhaps they were accepting being a maths person as part of their self-identity and i say i'll come back to that and then from the the following one which was the curriculum um from the psychoanalytical approach and like i struggle with that approach but we actually had I think it was Margaret just sort of threw in a conversation about weaning students and teachers off their current practices and it fitted with what the presentation we'd had about relating current difficulties back to relationships in the past and so it took me back to my students in Nottingham and the parallels between them wanting their security and feeling very anxious when I took it away and that weaning process of what were the steps that I could take with them that enable, would enable them to cope more and more with uncertainty, to cope with maths as still fulfilling their function, still being the mother, but they're gaining their independence as mathematical thinkers and workers within the classroom and becoming secure enough in the classroom to take risks.